Thank you, Brad. I thank you all for being here today to pay your respects to my mom, beautiful woman. Not just my mom, but the Betty Hawes, friend of so many, the baby sister to Mary and Sal, so many. Grandma, great grandma, it's a beautiful woman. The mom that my the mom that God gave me was absolutely Anyway, the decision that my mom made to have this burial, she, she wanted to have a, a burial side service. That was it. She wanted to keep it simple. And she asked Veronica to do the eulogy, and she asked me to preach the sermon. Veronica's never done a eulogy, and I haven't preached too many sermons over my mom's casket. So here we go. Uh, can we pray? Father, I want to thank you so much for all you've given us and all you've done. I thank you so much for my mom and this beautiful woman and the life that she led and the, the life she impacted for so many, whether it was a young child being the brat or whether it was as a loving mom or whether it was as a, as a grandma later on in life. She was always a great friend. I spent hours and hours and hours of my life listening to her talk and consoling her friends and the woman was loved by so many. Lord, just please touch these people's hearts, Lord, that she loves so much. Please touch their hearts and let them see you in her life. And Lord, I just pray that her prayers will be answered by you. Are you and I ask these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, when my mom decided to when my mom decided to have hospice at our home for the final days of her life, she gave my family the greatest gift you can't even imagine. I mean, people thought they were like, oh, thank you for doing that. But it was our, it was a gift that she gave us. I was begging my mom to come to our house for the last couple of years and, and the last six months even more. And for her to finally say yes, I, I can't even explain what that meant to me. I got to see three major things that came out of that blessing. I got to see, first of all, my mom was living in my house, man. How cool is that? You walk in the door and right off to the right, there's our dining room. That's where we set up our room. So anybody who came in when Joshua was coming in or Crystal was coming in or, or one of the kids was coming in late, Grace, she was right there. We just sat and talk and hang out with me. I not only got to talk to my mom, the gift that she gave me was I got to talk to her myself and spend that time with her at the end of her life. But I also got to see her interact with my children and my wife and Veronica's children and her family and how amazing that was. And I'll tell you right now, young Veronica back there has got, is gonna do great things, man. She's got energy that goes for miles and miles and miles. Her emotional gas, gas tank is, is endless. She helps my wife and my mom so much with the, my little with my little kids while my wife is trying to take care of them. It was absolutely incredible. Thank you so much, Veronica. That was a gift, and it's, it's only right. Um, just seeing my mom interact, seeing people come Friends and family come from, Sherry came 10 hours, to, Sherry drove 10 hours from Texas to see my mom for two hours and to drive 10 hours back, all right? That's amazing, that's the love that people have for this woman. Friends and family, cousins, I got to see so many people, it was such a blessing to have my mom end her days at my house. And to see the joy and the peace that she had and how much she loved that fellowship with all of you. Every one of you she loved, every one of you she prayed for, I guarantee it, I know this woman. Her and I spent a lot of time together. She loved every one of you so much. She prayed for your salvation and your deliverance. She wanted you guys to know the Lord is saving that she knows. When I got to see this fellowship, I got to see all this. This was a tremendous gift that my mom gave us. But my mom also gave us a second gift. And a second gift for me was kind of more of a selfish thing. I got to see the most two, two most influential, powerful women in my life. The women who shaped me. My mom made me the man that I am. There's absolutely no way I'd be married to that woman right there and have these children if it wasn't for the things that my mom taught me when I was a young child. This, this two women that I love the most though, they, already, they, they loved each other before this. But to see the relationship and then fall in love even deeper with each other during this last time of my mom's life was priceless. My, my wife has a servant's heart and my mom was the brat, right? And my wife treated my mom like she was the queen of the universe. And everybody who knows my mom knows how much she loved every second of that. Hey, Chris, I need this. Hey, Chris, can you get me that? And my, my wife was on it and it wasn't out of obligation. It was because my wife truly loved my mom. It was, it was a love. It was a dedication. It was a. It was just a beautiful thing to see. What a gift that was from 
for my mom to give me that, to allow me to see the two most powerful, influential, beautiful women in my life to love each other right to the very end and to share, share each other's needs. And it was just fascinating. It was so amazing for me to see and it was such a blessing. But the greatest gift that my mom gave me, the greatest gift that my mom gave me was to see her stare down death face to face with not a fear, not, not even the slightest bit of concern. She was not afraid. She was at total peace. She was looking forward to seeing her Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. My mom, for me as a young boy, like you gotta realize this was not just a, a one-time end of life thing that I saw my mom do this. I saw my mom do this from the time that I was a young child. My earliest memory, this woman taught me what love was. When I think about what love was, I, the first person I can identify that thought is with my mom. And I love this woman so much, but she she taught me well, the first the first time I can remember ever having a conversation with my mom, it was nighttime. I was laying in my bed. It was dark. I could hear outside my bedroom, I could hear there was a bunch of fighting going on, a bunch of arguing and emotion and stuff. And my mom comes into my bedroom and she says, come on, Sean, we're going home. That was very confusing to a four-year-old boy because we were home. I was laying in my bed. I was laying, in, I was in my bedroom. I was, look, right above my head, there was the planes that my mom hung for me. And there was the basketball net that my dad created out of a lampshade, okay? This is my home, we're going home, my mom says. I didn't know what she meant at that time. But what she meant was my dad had broken her heart. My dad had shattered her dreams. My dad had devastated her. My mom loved my dad to the end of her life. That was the love of her life. It never changed. My mom said she had enough. We're going home. She went to, we, went, we went to be my grandma face. God gave my mom the strength she needed that day. My mom was a firm believer that God gives you the strength you need for today, today. He does not give you the strength that you need today for you know, or tomorrow today. He gives you the strength you need for today, today. I saw God give my mom that streak that day when she left this dream that she had of being this woman who would never work another day in her life and she'd be married to Norman Ross forever and we'd have a beautiful family and it would be amazing. I saw my mom have the strength to walk away from that because God gave her that strength. When my mom needed to raise a, a child now on her own, we moved into 5022 Eleanor. And in those days, man, I'm gonna give you guys some insight. My mom and I, when we started out, we literally had nothing. We had a mattress on the floor that we slept on together. I can remember eating meals with my mom when one of us would eat and then we had to wash the plate and the two the two the pieces of silverware that we had so the other one could eat. Okay. We had no TV, we had no house, we had no we had no car, we certainly didn't have any of the modern conveniences. We had each other, we had the Bible, we had sing alongs. One time we were coming back from practice, I told Abby, I said, watch this. I was telling Abby about how my mom and I used to have single lines all the time. I just called my mom, I cold called her about maybe six weeks ago. I cold called, no, it was probably a little bit longer than that. I cold called her, I just said, my mom answered the phone, she said, hello. I said, well, we ain't got a barrel of money. And immediately my mom just started singing and Abby got to witness this love that my mom had for each other, that we had for each other, just amazing love. But I watched my mom, I watched my mom turn to God. He, she pointed me to the Bible. She pointed at the Bible one time when I was a young man. And she said, and she said, Sean, this is the word of God. Anything it says is right, and anybody who disagrees with it is wrong. It's that clear. She knew who she was talking to. She was talking to a young man who wanted to be right about everything and always wanted to win all the arguments. So of course I had a passion to read this, this book, the Bible. And so my passion, that was my desire to learn how to read and I learned how to read and I read it every day and my mom and I had that fellowship together but I watched year after year after year when that when that boy that she called her pride and joy decided to skip school for the first time in kindergarten I mean can you imagine what she's thinking right I skipped school for the first time in kindergarten my mom God gave my mom the strength she needed that day to do what she needed to do and I guarantee you I didn't skip school again until sixth grade. I was terrified. <laughs> she gave me the beating of my life. She grounded me for three weeks, made me watch my friends play outside and she canceled my birthday that year. All right, I, I was not gonna skip again. My mom was the most amazing woman. Scott gave her the strength she needed to handle that situation. And when my mom got pregnant with my with my sister Veronica, God gave her the strength she needed to handle that situation. And when she had raised two children instead of one child by herself, God gave her the strength she needed to handle that situation. God was always with her. She taught me that God would never abandon you or forsake you. 
I saw God in her life from start to finish. When, when she told that young boy that she loved so much, if, if you get in any more trouble at school today, or if anything happens to this cast you got on your leg, I had three casts in three weeks. If anything happens to this cast, or you get in any more trouble in school, you're going to your dad's. That's it. I came home that day, suspended from school without a cast on my leg. Can you imagine what my mom was thinking? Can you imagine the strength that woman needed when she had to follow through with what she said? I'm gonna send you to your dad's. So she sent the love of her life. She sent her pride and joy to the man who broke her heart. Never knowing if I would ever even come back. Think about the strength that that takes as a mom. That's crazy. God gave her that strength she needed as she needed it in that moment. And the same thing happened over and over and over again throughout her entire life. I'm cut short here today because these guys want 600 bucks if I go a minute over. So I can't keep going. But I'm telling you guys, my mom believed in Jesus Christ as her Lord and Savior. My mom had that strength from him. So when I saw my mom living out the last days of her life at my house, and she had no fear at, at all towards death, when she was actually looking forward to seeing Jesus Christ face to face, I cannot even explain to you what that meant to me. I cannot even explain to you what that meant to me. To see that strength i saw it my whole entire life but my mom her last request was that i would preach her sermon my mom uh, that i would preach this sermon for her funeral that was her last request and the reason why she wanted me to preach that sermon was because she loves every one of you every one of you who were in her prayers i guarantee it 100 percent. and what did she want for every one of you she wanted every one of you when you walk through the valley of the shadow of death that you won't fear evil you won't fear what's coming your way we're all going to face death face to face. We're all going to face death. Every single one of us are going to walk through that valley of the shadow of death. You've got to make a decision. Are you going to try to do it in your own strength? I feel sorry for you if you do. Are you going to embrace the Lord and Savior that Betty Haas served? She faced death without fear. I got to cut this thing short. We come, we come down, my wife and I come down on Saturday morning. My mom, I believe my mom actually passed Saturday night really, really late. I think right before midnight actually is what I think, she, what I believe she passed. But we came down on Saturday morning and I could see it in my mom's eyes. My wife and I both came down that morning together and my wife, my mom was on the end of her chair and she was rocking back and forth and I could see it in her face. My mom and I used to hang out at Charismatic Temp Revivals when I was a young kid and I know that look. She'd been talking to God all night long, I can tell you. She said it, I've been talking to God all night long. He took me through the universe. He showed me everything. He showed me good, he showed me bad, he showed me this, he showed me that. He told me it was my time to go. And I said, Lord, I need a little bit more time. God honored that and he gave her a little bit more time. She didn't have 24 hours. She had one more day. And man, my mom talked and talked. And I think she broke all the talking records. She wore my wife out talking. She wore me out talking. She wore whoever she was talking to on the phone out talking. She wore any of my kids that walked in the room out. She just kept talking and talking and talking all day long. And when she wasn't talking, she was eating food that my, my wife prepared for or went and got for her. She, she was treated like the queen of the universe and she loved every second of it. We went, that night, we all uh, we all said our good nights and we went to bed. I came in too late. My mom had already fallen asleep, so I just prayed for her. And then I went up to my room. The next morning, my wife comes down to check on my mom like she did every morning. And she comes down to check on her and she comes back up and she's shaking and she says, I think your mom passed last night. And I went down, came in the room and I said, mom, hey mom. She didn't answer but this is what you guys got to know i looked at that woman as she's sitting back in the most comfortable reclining chair you've ever that was ever made by man she sit back in this chair peaceful look on her face eyes closed not no signs whatsoever of stress or anything she had the remote control for the heating pad in her hand she wasn't clinching it she was just holding it my mom was at total peace. My mom had total peace because she did not fear death. And she did not fear death because she serves the Lord and the Savior, Jesus Christ, who conquered death. All right? She wants all of you. You don't have to tell me. You don't have to tell anybody as far as I'm concerned. If you feel the need to, I think you will. But every one of you guys, the Bible's very clear. It says that Jesus stands at the door and knocks. And if you open that door, he'll come in and sup with you. you can, he'll fellowship with you. You can know that same God that made her fearless at the end of her life. Bible's really clear. If you call on his name, you'll be saved. The Bible's really clear about these things. All right. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but through me. Remember, my mom pointed me to that book and she said, whatever this says is right and anybody disagrees with it is wrong. I don't care what anybody else tells you. I'm telling you, Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And the Bible is the word of God. 
And my mom was able to face death at the end of her life because she walked and she fellowshiped with Jesus Christ. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff will comfort me. All right? You want to know that, Lord? My mom was praying that you would know that, Lord. That's why she had me preach this sermon. She wanted all of you to hear the gospel one more time and make up in your mind and in your heart what you're going to do with that. In the end, there will only be two types of people. Those who say to God, your will be done, and those who God says to them, your will be done. Hell was not, hell was not created for mankind. Hell was created for the devil and his demons, the Bible tells us. That's the purpose of it. It's God's will that no one would go there. But unfortunately, many people will because they'll say, no, no thanks, I don't need your savior. I got it covered. I'm telling you, you don't have it covered. I'm telling you, when you face death face to face, you cannot do it in your own strength. There's only one way to have victory over death, and that's through Jesus Christ, who is your Lord and Savior. And that's what my mom wanted me to tell you, and that's what I told you. I love you all so much. You're all in my prayers constantly, and thank you so much for being here.